So let's jump into our first problem and see where we're going. Let's take the square root of 81. Now this one, we actually know uh, uh, the answer to because of our multiplication tables, but let's just go through the motions. You ask yourself, what times what is equal to 81? Now you might come up with something different, but I remember that nine times nine is 81. And I'm looking for, for pairs of numbers. And I immediately see the only thing in this tree is a pair of nine, so I pull out that nine and I say the answer is nine. Nine times nine is 81, so I know that that's right. Of course, I could have predicted this without a factor tree, but you'll see in a minute, you have to use the factor tree for some of these problems. Now, I wanna show you something about this. Here, we had the square root of 81, we said nine times nine is 81, and we identified this as a pair. Let's say that we didn't, we were kind of asleep and we didn't realize that we had a pair of nines right there, and we kept going. We said, all right, nine can be broken down as three times three, and this nine can be broken down as three times three. And these are all prime numbers at the bottom. It can't be broken down any further. And we again, we, we neglected the nines that were there. Now we're at the bottom of the tree and we're saying we're looking for pairs. Well, we see a pair of threes here and a pair of threes here. And for every pair you have, you pull it out. So you pull out a single out of here. So these, this pair of threes, you pull out a three. This out of a pair of threes, you pull out another three and they're multiplied together. And three times three is nine. Notice you get exactly the same answer. So whether or not you just use multiplication tables, you'll get the right answer. Whether or not you put it into a factor tree and immediately identify pairs of numbers, you will get the correct answer. And if you don't recognize that, if you break it all the way down to the bottom and you still pull pairs of numbers out and you're multiplying everything on the bottom of this tree, so these are multiplied, you will still get the same answer. I'm just showing you that because a lot of students don't know what to do. Should I stop here? Should I stop there? Basically do what you want. Go into the tree and look for pairs of numbers. If you don't see any, then just keep on going until you get it down to the primes at the bottom and you will get the correct answer. Even if you may have overlooked pairs that existed higher up in the tree. Now let's take a look at our first problem where, uh, I guess most people would probably know it, but uh, it's a larger number. Let's take a look at the square root of 121. Notice I have to extend my square root symbol because I have three digits there, 121. So you go over here and say, okay, 121, uh, what times what can give me 121? And then you remember from your multiplication tables that 11 times 11 is 121. We're looking for pairs of numbers because it's a square root. And so the answer is 11 because 11 times 11 is 121. All right, let's take a look. Again, getting to the very top of our multiplication table knowledge, 144, what's the square root of that? So you come over here and you can say, all right, 144. Uh, we know the answer is gonna be 12, right? Because we recognize that 12 times 12 is 144. So we could circle this pair right here and just say the answer is 12. And that is right because 12 times 12 is 144. But again, let's say that we were kind of asleep at the wheel and we didn't really recognize we had a pair here. And instead we say, all right, what about two times six? is 12, and this two times six could be 12, but I can keep breaking these numbers down. This six can be two times three, and this six can be two times three. Now the twos here are already prime, they can't be broken down any further, and the threes are prime, they can't be broken down further. So you look at everything on the bottom of this tree, all of this, don't forget this one, that's also at the bottom of the tree, all of these are at the bottom, and you're looking for pairs, all right? I see a pair of twos here, uh, I see a pair of twos here because this, these are all in the bottom of the tree. Now these threes are not next to each other, but they're still in the bottom. So this is also a pair of threes. Now these sixes are not in the bottom. So they're, they're not, we're looking, you're looking generally in the bottom of the tree here. So what you would have is you would pull out a single two from this pair, a single two from this pair, and the single three from this pair. And two times three is six, uh, I'm sorry, two times two is four, and four times three is 12. And that's exactly the right answer. So again, I'm just showing you my examples that when you put it in a factor tree, look for pairs. If you see pairs of number high up in the tree, just stop and use those pairs. You don't have to keep going. But if you do keep going, and you keep getting it all the way to the bottom, and you find pairs of those prime numbers at the bottom, and you pull those out, again, only pull out one number for every pair you see, and you multiply them all together, you will always get the correct answer for the square root. I, I'm harping on this because now uh, here in a few lessons here, we're gonna to have to use that knowledge because the numbers are gonna get a little bit larger. 
what about the square root of 100? All right, so we can go over here and say, okay, the square root of 100, I'm going to uh, ask myself, what times what is 100? And I recognize that 10 times 10 is 100. Now I could have done two times 50, right? Or I could have done four times 25. In fact, I'll, I'll do it a couple different ways just to show you. But this is the easiest because you know that 10 times, there's a pair of 10s right here. I just circle them and say the answer is 10. And you know the answer is 10 because 10 times 10 is 100, right? But let's say that you didn't recognize that these pairs of 10 were here. Then you would say two times five and you would say two times five. Now these are all prime numbers. We can't break them down any further and we look for pairs. So here's a pair of twos and in a different color, here's a pair of fives. So the pair of twos comes out as one two, the pair of fives comes out as one five and so the answer is 10. The answer is uh, square root of 100 is 10 just like this. Now let's do it a different way. Square root of 100. Let's do something crazy. Instead of um, uh, instead of uh, 2 times 50, let's just do 4 times 25. Because it doesn't matter what you choose under this factor tree, you're going to get the right answer. Right? So this 4 can be written as 2 times 2. And this 5 can, I mean this 25 can be written as 5 times 5. And then again, you're looking for pairs of numbers. You have a pair of 2s and a pair of 5s. This will come out as a single two, this will come out as a single five, and again, you get 10. If you do the same exercise with, you know, uh, 50 times two, or anything else you can, uh, you know, five times 20 is also 100. You could do the same, let's just do it again, why not? Five times 10, let's go, let's, uh, I'm sorry, not five times 10, five times 20. This is also equal to 100. What do you have for 20? You have five times four is 20. And what do you have for four? Two times two, and look at what you have, a pair of fives and a pair of twos. 2 times 5, they're going to come out once. 2 times 5 is 10. You get exactly the same answer. I'm showing you this because I want you to understand kind of deep in your bones that it doesn't matter the numbers you choose under this factor tree. You'll always get the correct answer for the square root if you're doing it right. All right. Now, let's take a look at our first problem where I think it's too big to do in your head. 225. Some of you might know what the square root of this is. I don't. Uh, but I do know that I can use a factor tree. 225. And you have to do a little bit of playing around with it because you have to figure out something times something to give me 225. Uh, and I start dividing, as I know it has a five here, I start dividing by five and I recognize that five times 45 is equal to 225. Now the five is already prime, but this 45 can be broken down into five times nine is 45. Again, this can't be broken down any further, but the nine can be three times three. And now these are all prime numbers at the bottom. They can't be broken down any, to any further than what they already are. And now we're looking for pairs. We have a pair of fives in the bottom of the tree. And we have a pair of threes in the bottom of the tree. So what's this mean? This square root of 225 is a single five pulled out multiplied by a single three pulled out. And five times three is 15. Five times three is 15. So what we're saying is 15 times 15 is 225. We can check our work by going 15 times 15 and just multiplying it out. Five times five is 25. Five times one is five, then we have a seven, drop a zero. One times five is five, one times one is one. And then we have a five here, and then we have a two and carry a one and a two, 225. So 15 times itself is equal to 225. I don't remember that. Most people will not remember that. So you have an, two options. If you have to calculate the square root of 225, you can use a computer or a calculator, course it'll give you the right answer but you won't know what you're doing um, or you can use a factor tree now you do have to do a little you know math here to figure out something times something to give you 225 but it could be any two numbers and just keep breaking them down until you get down to the primes like we did here and you'll always get the right answer all right let's take a look at problem number six here we have the square root of 196 so let's go over here, 190, whoops, not 169, 196, right? And we have to come up with any two numbers that multiply to give us uh, that. If you divide this by two, because you know it's divisible by two, then you will have two times 98. And I think you can convince yourself that two times 98 is equal to 196. This is already prime. This 98 can be broken down, because again, it's divisible by two, two times 49. Because if you think about it, two times 50 is 100, so two times 49 should be 98. Now this 49, I'm gonna write it as seven times seven. 
and now I'm done. Everything at the bottom is prime numbers. I can't break them down any further than what they already are. And I'm looking for pairs. I have a pair of twos and I have a pair of sevens. And so the pair of twos comes out as a single two. The pair of sevens comes out as a single seven. And the answer is 14. Two times seven is 14. Now I'm going to leave it to you. But if you take 14 times 14, the answer you will get would be 196. And that is why it is the square root. Notice these are all bigger numbers, but they're still perfect squares because the answers we're getting for all of them are just whole numbers. These are perfect squares because there's no decimals involved. It's just whole number times whole number uh, gives you what's under that radical there. All right, let's take a look at the last two problems. What about the square root of 400? Now, a lot of you can probably in your head think about what times itself could give you 400, but for the rest of us, you come over here and you say, all right, I'm just gonna use a factor tree. Now you could pick literally anything you want. I know that 400 is four times 100. So I write that down. I can break this down further as two times two. I can break this down as two times 50. I can break this down as two times 25. I can break this down as five times five. And now I'm done because everything in the bottom is prime. You see twos and fives, you can't break them down any further. And then I say, all right, I have a pair of twos here. I have a pair of twos right here and I have a pair of fives here. So to get this answer, you say this pair of twos comes out as a single. This pair of twos comes out as a single. You got to multiply together. This pair of fives comes out as a five. Two times two is four. Four times five is 20. And the answer to this is 20. And you can verify it by saying, okay, 20 times 20 is 400. Makes sense because two times two is four. You have the extra zeros. You're going to get an answer of 400. All right, and here is our last problem. Let's take a look at 256 and find the square root of 256. So we go over here and say, well, I have no idea what the square root of 256 is. So I'm just going to divide this thing by two because I know it's divisible by two. And when I divide that by two, either on a separate sheet of paper or maybe you can do it in your head, it, you know, everybody's different. Two times 128, you can find out, is equal to 256. And then the 128 is also divisible by two. 2 times 64. You might have to divide by 2 to get that. You might have to do long division to do some of these things. That's okay. But the 64 can be written as 2 times 32, right? I could keep going down, but actually, uh, 64 is something I remember. And so you can, you can keep going down and breaking it down, but I also remember that 8 times 8 is 64. And I could keep breaking these down, but remember, when you get to a pair, you can stop. And so I can circle that pair and, and stop breaking it down if I wish. Uh, it would still give you the same answer if I continued breaking it down all the way down to primes. But here, I just choose to stop and say, this pair of twos comes out as a two, this pair of eights comes out as an eight, and two times eight is 16, and 16 is the answer. And if you take and multiply 16 times 16, you will get 256. So I hope you can see that the process for these is exactly the same as what we've done before. There is no difference. Big number, small number, same thing. Write down a factor tree, break it down, something times something. It could be anything. Whatever multiplies to give you that number and keep breaking it down until you start seeing pairs or if you're not seeing pairs, just break it all the way down to prime numbers and then look for the, uh, for the pairs. And every single time we did that, we were able to take these pairs out and pull them out. And so the answers we always get are whole numbers. This is because all of these problems are specially constructed to be perfect squares. So I give you the square root of 400 because I know that 20 times 20 is 400. And I give you the square root of this because I know that 16 times 16 is this. But what if I change this problem slightly? Instead of square root of 256, what if it's the square root of 257? Well, suddenly it's, it's gonna be a little bit bigger than 16, but it's not gonna be 17 because 17 times 17 is not 257. It's gonna be some decimal. It's gonna be 16 point something. And so those, problems we would do a little bit later. Here we're just focusing on perfect squares where the answers come out to be whole numbers. But I don't want you to think that that's always the way it works because if I give you a random number like square root of 331, it's almost certainly not going to be a whole number. I haven't calculated it, but I'm sure it's going to be a decimal answer of some sort. So we learn this first. We learn what a square root is because you can check your work easily. We use the factor trees because they're easy. And then when I give you numbers in a few lessons where we try to take the square root of 258 or 263 or something like that, 
We're still gonna use the factor trees and you will find out what happens when it's not a perfect square. I promise you the answer is not hard or difficult to come by, but we have to master this first. So solve all of these yourself. We've learned about the concept of a square root. For square roots, because they involve square, square roots, then we're looking for pairs of numbers, right? Because it's square, the number two is in square, right? In the next lesson, we're gonna learn about cubed roots. Now, if you had to take a guess, what would you do if you had to find the cube root of a number? Well, you would write down this factor tree, but because it's a cube root, you would be looking for triplets of numbers in the bottom of your factor tree. And that's what we're gonna do in the next lesson. So follow me on to the next lesson, we're gonna conquer the topic of cube roots, and I promise you that once you understand this, cube roots are really, really piece of cake. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.